Hi chess fans and welcome to my first analysis of a master game. Uh, the game I present you is a game between Alexandra Kastanyuk and Maya Lominashi, if I pronounced that correctly. It is played in uh, 1999 in Dresden, Germany. Uh, Alexandra actually is one of my favorite chess players. I really like how she uh, handles chess pieces and as far as I observe her she also seems to be a really nice person. I don't have her level, so I might uh, miss a few things. Feel free to correct me or to add your own analysis. Here we'll start. E4, Alexandra has the white pieces. C5, Sicilian. Knight 3, E6. So far, it's all theory. Takes, takes, queen to d3 and e5. An idea that white uh, might try here is queen to g3. After queen g3, uh, pass queen e7. And now white can win a pawn. Normally I don't recommend taking a pawn when the rook can take a half open file straight towards your king, but it's worth consideration because the black king over here also is not very safe. So that is a bit of compensation for your own unsafe king. It did not happen. Alexandra played knight to d1, black castled, bishop e3, d7, and a3. Here, black played bishop c5 and white responded with b4 um, it's a bit forcing black to take the white bishop let's say black would retreat the bishop to a7 then white can close out the black bishop and have some have some play the counterparts of the black bishop the white bishops would be uh, pretty sound and of course, the black bishop can escape by the move b7, b6, but that's not not very sound because white simply takes the pawn, and as indicated by the colors here, uh, black immediately has two ice pawns, and I said the pawn on c6 becomes an instant target for the rest of the game, I think. So white would be pretty happy with uh, this development. Uh, black took the bishop, and uh, white knight positions himself a bit better. Rocky 8, c5. It does two very important things. It gains more space. You see that white has more space on the queen side, and also has more play uh, potentially on the king side. The center uh, is also controlled by white, so that leaves black a bit cramped. Besides that, the d6 square is potentially very nice for a white knight. And a white knight can come there in two jumps uh, through c4, d6, or perhaps through f5, d6. Knight of 8. Knight c4, preparing to jump to d6. Rook d8. Queen c3, of course you'll notice now that the white pieces are double attacking the uh, black pawn. Uh, surprisingly, black played rook to d4, and I, I really don't understand why, to be honest. Maya is rated over the 2300, should have a purpose for this. Perhaps to come a bit out of the out of the bind, but the next move of white wasn't so hard to find. I think uh, the next move is, of course, knight to d6. And now as you can notice the black rook may seem advanced, but it really is closed in. It cannot move to the d5 square. It cannot move to c4. It, of course, it cannot take. It cannot take here because that is defended by the bishop, and it cannot get to any other square here. 
The knight on d6, however, really is a monster. The bishop on c8 is on a white square, so he can nev never take the, the knight. And although the white knight and the black knight uh, seem close, they are really far apart. Um, black has to maneuver quite a bit to attack the white knight, and in the meanwhile, white has free moves. For example, knight to d7 to f6 to e8, and then, then still e8 first has to be defended, and only then the white knight is attacked. So it takes over 4 moves. If I were black and I was in a situation like this, I would be very tempted. I think I would not only be tempted, I think I really would play rook takes d6. I would, uh, I would definitely try to take the knight, uh, win the pawn, and try to get some counterplay. But I have to admit it will be very hard because the white pieces, the white pieces are placed uh, very well. The white rooks come into action very soon, and uh, black still has to develop. Uh, there's a knight sitting on, on f8. The rook is still is blocked in, and the bishop on c8. But uh, true, it, perhaps it is lost. Black played knight e6. Now Alexander has a beautiful move. F4. And what can Black do? What should I do? I think the only thing reasonable is taking the F4 pawn. I think I think Black should take the pawn. And after E takes F4, of course E5, and White's pretty happy. Uh, of course, uh, if you doubt it, why does uh, Black not take with the with the knight? Of course, that's, that's not a possibility because if White simply takes the Black Knight, they already has won because Black cannot take back because the rook would fall instantly. And also, a tactic like this does not work because first of all, White takes the rook and attacks the queen at the same time. So Black cannot take with the knight. So if black takes, he has to take with the pawn. I still think taking the pawn is best. Here black makes, uh, I think, uh, a really huge mistake by defending the pawn. Uh, it's a mistake because white can simply take the pawn. And after black retakes, then the black king even is more open and more vulnerable to the attacks from white on the f-file. And sec secondly, because the white bishop can simply pin the black knight, as Alexandra does. Immediately, black steps out of the pin. He has to. Now white opens up. Well, black already is totally lost here. Black plays, uh, white plays, of course, rook f7. And here we can see the strength of the white knight standing on d6. Queen d8. Rook f1. Bishop d7 and Queen g3, threatening to take the knight. And if black recaptures, then it's checkmate on g7 because g7 lost its defender. Black plays knight g5, and now there's a beautiful finish. Um, if you want to find it, pause the video. I'll explain it to you in 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Here Alexandra played a beautiful move, queen takes g5. Yes, it is a queen sacrifice from the chess queen herself, but not at all suicide, because the black queen can simply win, <laughs> because the black queen simply cannot win the white queen. That's what results in checkmate. So instead, Instead of uh, allowing something like this to happen, and instead of being mated uh, in an another line, because there's really a huge pressure on the black king side here, her opponent decided to resign. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you want to add some lines, feel free to do so. I'd, I'd like to see some ideas. And uh, see you later. Greetings from Holland. Bye.